everyone, welcome back to Play the Game HQ. I'm Allison, this is Daniel, and today we are looking at Maple Valley, which is the sequel, sequel not prequel, the sequel to Creature Comfort by Kids Table Board Gaming. Um, and it's springtime now. Yes. So in Creature Comforts, it was winter, like we were going through the seasons mm -hmm. and we were preparing getting, our little... Getting ready to hibernate. Yes, and gathering all the creature comforts so that yeah. we would have a really comfortable winter. And now yeah. it's spring and we're about to party. And there's babies running around, so... Oh, that so yes, so this is a prototype for the upcoming Kickstarter. So some things may change slightly in the final version, but this is Maple Valley. As Allison said, this is a sequel to Creature Comforts. It shares some of the mechanics, some of the scoring kind of comboing. It's but familiar. It, it is familiar, but unique. So in the story of the game, we are playing over one full day. It's five rounds as the sun moves through the sky. We're crafting favors to get ready for the parties. We will craft favors by traveling on these little pathways, collecting resources, and a big difference in this game is that we are getting friends that are going to help us. The friends can travel on a specific type of pathway, and you can also spend maps to travel on non-matching pathways. You're gonna be collecting little, uh, what are these called? Those are curiosities. curiosities. Yes, rocks and bugs and flowers and things to recruit your friends from the town or from the, the village. village. And it is just an adorable follow-up to Creature Comforts. As Allison said, it feels very familiar, mm -hmm. but very unique in its own right. We have a full playthrough of this game. If you want to see it in play, we'll leave a link below and a little pop-up right up here. So what is really unique about this game is you see no dice. Mm -hmm. So with Creature Comforts, like we were saying, you do dice placement in order to kind of strategically plan out what you're gonna do. With this, you're strategically planning out by the trails that you're gonna travel mm -hmm. with the friends that you have recruited, or I don't wanna say like we paid them, but we've been like, we hey, paid them. do you we want, paid do them you want in, some yeah. stones? I got some cool bugs. Yeah, we in, paid them in rocks and bugs and flowers. We, in flowers, yeah. And so, but doing that, it has almost like not a deck build, mm -hmm. it's not a deck builder, but it almost has that type of hinting to it because it's you do- It's a little do, hand management. Yeah, it is, because you're, you're spending, your cards as your actions to then gather your resources and then at the end of the rounds all your cards go back into mm -hmm. your hand and then you plan out more resources yeah. and as you gather friends there's also I, I love the little hints and nudges to like the dawdle like mm -hmm. I remember my mom growing up was like don't dawdle like drag my feet and stuff and so if you didn't gather any friends you get dawdle cards so that you have a turn every round even if you don't have as many friends as the mm -hmm. other players yeah. so those those type of things and like you you zoom across the map with one of the places that you go and like animals get like the zoomies like it's I think very, of like cats it's very very on theme. It is, and like yeah. the curiosities and just all those little things. I, I really love yeah. the little nudges that you have. Yeah. And then there's also the cards and how they play into each other. Yeah, so again, instead of crafting quilts and rocking chairs and soups and stews, you're, you've got fruit punch and you've got dolls and garlands and vases and jars of Bun bugs jars. and <laughs> things that you're going to use. You have a fiddle, so you're gonna like, and you, there were, Allison played music alone in her little hidey hole in Creature Comforts. I did. But now you have your fiddle and your tambourine that you're going to be playing for the whole the whole town. Party. Yeah, the party. whole party. So I think in this versus Creature Comforts, this introduces more choice and more strategic choice. Where in Creature Comforts, you were kind of at the will of the dice and you were still strategic, but it was strategic in like, okay, here's the dice were rolled. How can I best luck. manipulate those? And how can I best utilize those mm -hmm. to get what I need? There was more luck in it. This one, it's it's much more strategic in that you're recruiting your friends to be able to travel efficiently. Right. And then kind of figure out how you're gonna travel to, to craft it. It is that same choice of like, what resources do I wanna collect to craft? And hopefully what I, what I collect right. is usable and something usable comes up because you do only have four cards out at a time. And the turns do tend to go fast because mm -hmm. now you're not placing all of your critters out first and then everyone goes. Mm -hmm. You are, as each turn goes, you're like, okay, I'm just gonna move here and collect right. these You resources. have one so critter, do... your friends are moving one meeple around. Right, they are. Um, so you're doing one thing, that's my turn. The next person goes, they do one thing, maybe they craft something mm -hmm. and then they collect something else and then that's their turn and it goes really quick. Yeah. And especially if like in our in our game where a few of us had quite a few dawdle cards, you're just laying down the dawdle yeah. card, collecting those resources you and moving on. You don't move, you don't activate route, like 
locations mm-hmm. when you dawdle. And there's just so many strategic mm-hmm. leanings in this where yeah. um, even like choosing the cards that you're going to craft because you want to put your, you have these little cubes that you put on your parties. Yeah. And once the party is complete, the cubes are all filled up in those locations or those spots. That does something that enables you to do something else. Mm-hmm. So there's that, when those are filled up, you're like, okay, well now I need to lean into how my favors like blend into each other and yeah. so the the strategy kind of moves and shifts as the game goes on it it's, definitely it plays really interesting yeah, it though. definitely accelerates as the game goes on mm-hmm. so on the first round you have your um your starting friend which is right here so your starting friend can move on any type of path but mm-hmm. you have to decide which type of path you're going to move on so you have your starting friend and then you get one random friend so on your first turn you can only move twice and do yeah. two actions if you do recruit friends, they go into your exhausted pile and they don't, they're don't. they not available till the next round. So your first round, like it, it definitely accelerates. You're able to do more the farther you go. Yeah. Um, and it, it just, I really like the, the feel of this one. There's so many different, like you said, there's so many different strategic things versus just move and activate and move and activate. Right. It, it does have a lot of depth while still keeping it very, very accessible. And they've got we've got these two outposts as well where you can go there mm-hmm. and that can be a really efficient um, yeah, turn for you because trading. if you have different resources that you can then trade, you can do each of those things. If there's a number on there, you do have some limited mm-hmm. on some of them, but otherwise you can do all of them all at the same time and then zoom somewhere else and activate that. I mean, that yeah. can be a really, these turns can either be extremely simple or extremely valuable yeah. depending on how you play it out. And I just, I was not expecting this to be mm. quite as strategic heavy as it was. Yeah. You can play it lighter, like we've played it with the boys and we've played it lighter. Our point values were much lower mm. when we played it lighter and we still had fun. But the three of us, when we played our playthrough, we played very heavy strategically yeah. and it was very satisfying. It was, and it's, it's one of those, like there is more the game moves quicker than Creature Comforts because in Creature Comforts, you're taking your turn, you're placing the dice, you're doing all of your stuff with them, like resolving that. Mm -hmm. So there is some downtime that is not existent, that is not present in this game because you are playing one card, you're moving, you're activating, you're crafting anything that you can at the end of your turn, but then it goes on to the next person. Your round is is executed just, Mm -hmm. or your turn is executed by playing one card and doing what you can versus let me place and figure out the most efficient way to place and resolve all of my dice. So it does, I think it moves quicker. I think for younger players, that's going to be, Creature Comforts is accessible to younger players, but it did have some downtime that was, uh, could be an issue with. Well, and because of that, like if, now I didn't do, we didn't have a lot of downtime in ours because Mm -hmm. we were always like, okay, what am I going to do next? Now, if you do have younger players, like our nine-year-old, he wasn't thinking through what he was going to do next. Right. So it there came was, his turn and he's like, oh, I don't know. What do I need to do? But he also wasn't thinking as strategically as like, he wasn't thinking through like, what is the absolute most efficient thing that I can do? Right. And I think that's where you get in with adults are yeah. going to be more Those last more few turns, those yeah. last few turns, I could easily sit there and be like, what can I do that right. would best let me just wrap this up, whether it's collect as many resources because you do get points at the end of the game for mm-hmm. a different amount of resources and which ones you have, or, okay, do I need to use my dawdles and then maybe create um, a craft one yeah. last favor? Like balancing that out is, yeah. is I, I, I tend to take a little bit longer on those, but gosh. And player interaction is still minimal. It's there. Like you're still competing for the same favors mm-hmm. and the same patches. The patches are pretty cool. The patches you collect and they just either give you points for the type of friends that you have or they give you points for different resources you have or they let you do, like some of them let you, you travel a certain path. type of path mm-hmm. without having to play a map. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's, valuable. that's where the player interaction comes in is the things that you want to collect, whether you're trying to recruit a friend or get a patch or, um, or get a a certain favor and the competition those, yeah. at the parties. Yeah, those Placing. may be yeah, mm-hmm. those those cards that you want may be gone if someone gets to them first. Like Allison said, the placing your cubes up here, you score at the end based on who has the most. You score one for each cube, but then if you have the most, you get three bonus points. So there is that interaction, but there's beyond that, like it's it's very friendly in that multiple people can be at the same location. You're yeah. not blocking people out of things. So again, from a family standpoint, that's really good because you're not heavily impacting other people's turns, even though you might swipe a 
a card that they want. And you can play, like this is my hand and it's hidden, or you can just play with your available cards out. Yeah, because so it's it, not really going to, like it's not going to do much. You're not, I, right. you can look and say, okay, you're, I think you may want to get this card. More so it's the looking at what you have and looking at what your combos are mm -hmm. and seeing if like, oh, I think I need to get this card because I think you're probably going to get it next turn because right. we both have the same combo we're going for. Like my combo here I had the marionettes. And if I brought the marionettes, if I had yeah. lanterns with that, then I got two more points. With and the I lanterns, also had if marionettes. I had, yeah, if I had the lanterns and paintings, then I got two more points. Yeah. Well, if I had the paintings and the marionettes, I get two more points. So that was like a a triangle yeah. of combo points there with yeah. those. So that's the, the way you can do that. And then you can also store resources mm -hmm. to add more points. Yeah. So there's all of those leaning in, those last little points can I add up? Can I add up here and here? Yeah. I don't know. And all in all, I, I really enjoyed this guy. I, I think did. it is a very good next step from Creature Comforts. It, it fits in the world really well. It continues the story really well. It has a lot of familiar mechanics, mm -hmm. but also a lot of really new, fresh mechanics that, yeah, the, the patches, the stuff that, the, it's yeah. kids running around. So the, the fact that it adds in like the scout patches and things like that was really, I don't know, it, it's just a very well done on theme execution of, of that, creating something that feels I think that's familiar. That's why it surprised me. Because yeah. I was expecting, because at Creature Comforts, we were like the adult animals mm -hmm. playing the game. And I was like, oh, this is the adult version. So this would be like the younger kid, even though Kids Table Board Gaming has them both. I was expecting Maple Valley to be a step down, not a step next. Strategically, it is, it is easier to execute because, again, it, Creature Comforts could get bogged down, especially for younger kids, could get bogged down in the like, Okay, there's a bunch of dice. I really need to actually calculate and do a bunch of math mm -hmm. and see, like, not a bunch of math, but do math and see, like, how are these going to add up and what are the odds? That, like, there was just that calculation with the dice placement that doesn't exist here. So there are some, the available actions is simpler, but it's still just as strategic of a game. It's not, right. it doesn't feel lighter. Um, it doesn't feel. Which I was expecting. Yeah, it. It, like you said, it doesn't feel like a step down. It's just a a lateral move to a game that is just as fun, just as adorable, um, and just has some really cool, unique elements to it that I really, really enjoyed. Yeah, if you've played Creature Comforts, you will have that familiarity. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, I've been here, I understand this. Um, but you won't be feeling like you're replaying the same game. Not I could play all. one game after not the other all. and not feel like I'm overlapping at all. But at the same time, you could play one game, be super satisfied to play the other mm -hmm. game, and not have played either yeah. one. I just, they both are so different, yeah. but had that familiar. It's like when you play in the same world, that's yeah, what we're doing which, essentially. Which we um, and it, they just blend really well. I, I'm, I'm very impressed and I'm, I'm excited to have more people be able to play the game. Yeah. So this is Maple Valley from Kids Table Board Gaming. As we are shooting this, it is on its way to Kickstarter in just a couple weeks. But once that Kickstarter is over, we'll also leave links to where you can find it wherever it is in the life of the game. And be sure to check out our playthrough also, because that was a lot of fun. It was so fun. Yeah. All right. We'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye.